Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, you may already be familiar with the fact that uh, quantum espresso can calculate the electronic structure of a material, uh, but it, it can also calculate some mechanical properties of a material such as the uh, bulk uh, modulus, uh, Young's modulus, or shear modulus. Among those three properties, uh, maybe the easiest one for the calculation is the bulk modulus because you just need self-consistency calculation and uh, without further uh, knowledge. Okay, just as, as a recap, the bulk modulus means that if you apply some uh, uniform pressure on a, on a bulk material, uh, the volume will shrink. And uh, the bulk modulus K is defined to be minus V uh, dP dV, and P is pressure and V is volume. Yeah. So what we can do in quantum espresso is that we can do self-consistency self calculation, and the output uh, contains the pressure of the um, of the unit cell. So what we can do is that uh, we can um, expand the lattice constant by one percent. By, by a very small amount, and then uh, check what is the pressure, and uh, and compare it with the e equilibrium case. Um, so and then the difference of the pressure over the difference of the volume, uh, multiplied by the volume itself, uh, gives the bulk modulus. And also we can also shrink the uh, lattice constant by one percent or any small uh, um, value and calculate the, uh, the bulk modulus from there. So in this video, I will first uh, calculate the equilibrium case and then for um, and then uh, expand the lattice constant by 1%, calculate the pressure, uh, decrease the lattice constant by 1% compared with the equilibrium case and uh, calculate pressure, and then we can get an estimation of the bulk modulus. Uh, one thing to notice that um, is, is that here, uh, the bulk modulus actually has the unit of uh, pressure because uh, V uh, over dV here, or, or what we can see here, V over dV cancels the unit of uh, volume. So that's why you can use whatever unit for, for the volume, um, and it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's get started. The first uh, input file looks like this. And um, the important line is here. Yeah, you need to st uh, uh, specify T stress equals to true, which means that uh, the self-consistency calculation will output the stress, or we say the pressure, um, inside the unit cell. Okay, so so this line means that uh, the force on um, on each atoms are also shown shown in the output file, but uh, now it is not really necessary. You can also take it out. And um, in in this um, in this input file, we also uh, use a quite large um, kinetic cutoff energy and also the uh, uh, slightly dense k points because we want to get the result more precise. But in principle, what you should do is to um, increase the cutoff uh, kinetic cutoff energy gradually and also increase the k point density gradually and check how the uh, how the en uh, total energy or uh, pressure converges. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to copy the um, cell dimension, or we say what is the, the lattice constant, to here. So this is the equilibrium case, and um, we just do the calculation here. Okay, it's finished, and let's check the output file. You just scroll down to nearly the bottom, and then there's the total stress and also the uh, pressure in kilobar yeah so we put it here and we convert the kilobar to gigapascal uh, automatically here okay so this is the equilibrium case and then we want to expand the uh, the lattice constant by 10 percent yeah so this is the lattice constant of the equilibrium case and uh, to e expand it by 10 percent we can multiply it by 1.01 1 .01. and and then this is the uh, result, yeah, and then we copy the result here to the input file uh, to the second input file here. That's basically here, yeah. Okay, and everything else we keep it the same as the first input file, and uh, we just copy it to the uh, to the Excel. Okay, yes. And then we do the calculation.
Okay. Now let's find the pressure in the output file. Minus 24.9 kilobar. Yeah. So you see that um, in at equilibrium the pressure should be uh, close to zero. Yeah. So now we uh, increase the volume, and we get a um, get a finite pressure here. Okay. And then for the th third one, we um, we should also copy the equilibrium case, the lattice constant, and paste. And now we want to shrink it by 1%, so multiply it by 0 0.99. And then this is the result. And we copy it to the third uh, input file. OK. And then we can do the calculation again. OK. So we first uh, copy the lattice constant to the Excel. And then go to the output file and find the pressure here and copy it to the Excel also. Um, and then we can take the uh, pressure difference here, divide it by the volume difference here, and the volume is just the uh, uh, cubic of this lattice constant, and then multiply it by uh, equilibrium uh, volume, and this gives, gives you uh, uh, the first estimation of the bulk modulus, and and then we we do it for the same uh, uh, do the same thing for first and third uh, calculation and get an another estimation of the bulk modulus. You see that they are quite uh, quite close, and uh, we take the mean value and um, is around eighty nine gigapascal. So compared with the reference experimental reference value ninety seven point six gigapascal, the deviation is below uh, ten percent, which is quite good. So in this video, I, I have shown you how to calculate the bulk modulus of a silicon crystal. And uh, thank you for watching. If you like my video, I appreciate your like or subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time.